Uh, welcome to the internet. I hope you have a blessing out of this. We're going to talk about power today in uh, reading in Romans 13. We're going to have it like there's two different kinds of power that are involved in what we're going to deal with. And it's all about God. There are a lot of people that have authority but don't have the ability to use it. Uh, you find that in bosses. Uh, you find that in a lot of situations in life. Uh, a lot of people put in authority, but they just, they just don't have the ability to use it right, and it leaves a lot of people wanting. But with God, and this is not the only way the power is used, but I'm using it in these two ways. In Romans 13, 1, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. Now you understand, if you want to blame anybody, you're still going to go back to the source. And I'm going to show you why you're, I'm talking like that. Uh, evil was created by God also. And uh, there's a reason for that also as we go. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Uh, if you don't like your government and all that, it's still God allowed it. And God in his allowance, in grace, in grace he allows everything to be because in grace it is not of works. And so in grace we have to give him the glory and the things that go wrong, you find that if you went back to chapter 12, you'd find out this. Now watch in chapter 12, <clears throat> verse 17 recompense no man evil for evil provide things honest in the sight of all men if it be possible as much as life then you live peaceably with all men dearly beloved avenge not yourselves and obviously then they would if i wanted to avenge myself something has went wrong there's some kind of evil or something that i think is evil has went wrong he said avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto wrath for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay saith the lord in the dispensation of grace, which our apostle Paul tells us that we're in, grace means that all things are there and you have to take it as God's grace. In other words, we may not like what's going on around us, but we know it's not a mystery to God that it's happening. And does he have the ability and the authority to take care of all of it? And that's what we're going to go through. Now I want you to turn with me to Romans chapter 9. A lot of people blame God for this and blame God for that. It's not God. He allowed it to happen that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And if you don't want to believe the Bible... It doesn't matter. Uh, I tell atheists, if you don't want to believe in God, you bet your life that God don't exist, and I'll bet my life that it does. If you're right, we both lose, but if I'm right, you lose badly. In Romans chapter 9, look with me in verse 11. The story is about uh, Jacob and Esau. Uh, look with me in, uh, uh, not Jacob and Esau, uh, Isaac. Verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. Now, that's the condition of children. The child there does not know evil or good. Uh, all she knows is, where's mama at? I need food. But there comes a time when a person is accountable by knowledge. People always worry about what happens to babies when they die. God took care of the original sin. No sin is the judgment in the book of Revelation. He said the dead small and great. And you can learn that. If you'll study Revelation 20 a little harder than you've ever studied it, you might see a lot of things in there you didn't see before because it's just jam-packed full of stuff in the short little uh, chapter it is. But he said, 
For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand. An election is never without foreknowledge. Romans 8, them he foreknew, he did predestinate. The foreknowledge has to come because of God's ability and God's authority in it. He has the authority and the ability to know what's coming. But of him that calleth. Okay, so one of these children, Jacob and Esau, God's going to call. No, he's going to call them both. But one of them is the called. When I quoted you, Romans 8, 28, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called. Don't ever leave that word out. If you leave the word the out, you change the whole verse. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called. If you leave the word thee out, many are called, but few are chosen. You change the whole thing, so God is calling the lump. Uh, he says, people think, well, all religions are worshiping God, just worshiping Him in different ways. No, that is not what the Bible says. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can't just worship God any way you want to. You can't worship God <clears throat> by going to a building or cleaning up your life or whatever. You cannot worship him. You have to worship him the way he tells you to worship him, and he does it in his book. So many people are illiterate when it comes to the Bible because they never read the Bible. <clears throat> they just take it for granted that the guy up front would never lie to them. Well, he's a liar already because of Romans 3, 4. So we read on. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. <clears throat> now, that's not the way that it's supposed to be. But that's the way God said it would be. Usually the elder is the leader, the younger coming up. No. As is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Now, can you find in the Bible why he should love either one of them? Jacob's a scoundrel. I mean, he cheats, lies. I mean, he's a dandy. And Esau, he honestly, in all account of it, Esau's not as bad as Jacob in his conniving. Yet God loves Jacob more than Esau. Uh, would the churches in America welcome David into their church? David's an adulterer, a murderer, a liar. He's a rascal. And God said, this is a man after my own heart. And he's not saying that because he's not a sinner or that he is a sinner. He's saying this because he said, David will do my will. That's what the scripture said. He said, this is a man after my heart. Why? I know him and he'll do my will. Then it is not in God's will that we become non-sinners. How about that? Hello, are you awake? That's not God's will. God's will is that we would do his will. Well, let's read on. What's, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteous with God? Okay, God decides that he's going to save Forrest, but he ain't about to save George. Now, what kind of basis have we got here? What's the matter with both of them? All of sin and come short of the glory of God. So God, so George goes up before God one day in the judgment. He said, why did you not let me go in with, with Forrest? Because Forrest can run faster than you. Run, Forrest, run. Oh, no. No, George has got a legitimate argument. Why didn't you let me? we both sinners. we both done wrong. Well, I chose Forrest because I wanted to. George said, that ain't right. He's done some things I haven't done. I've done some things he hasn't done, but we're both on the same level here. 
And God said, I just like him, brother. That ain't the way God answers it. Is there unrighteousness with God? Now watch, read on. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Now the next verse. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same call, uh, same purpose have I raised thee up. Pharaoh? How, how, how good is Pharaoh? Is Pharaoh a terrible problem to Israel? Is he a hater of the God of Israel? He's a worshiper of animals. The Egyptians worship animals. Israelites sacrifice animals. You see the problem here? Israel sacrifices animals. Egyptians worship animals. So what kind of problem did Israel have while they were in captivity to Egypt? They can't worship God with the blood, which God requires. Okay. 17, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. Boy, I tell you, you think about this. You're born for a reason. If you're saved in here, you better go home, get in your closet, and get down. And thank God that he saved you. Otherwise, you'd be like Pharaoh. Now watch. That I might show my power in thee. Did Pharaoh use Israel? Did they build his cities? Were they in bondage to him? They were his slaves. Why in God's name would he let them go? That don't make no sense. Unless God showed his power. You see, that demonstration in Egypt was to show Pharaoh and the world God's power. And he did it. And it got to the point, finally, when Pharaoh's firstborn was killed, he wanted them out and away. That power had become so strong, he wanted them gone, away from them. That I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. No. When Egypt captured Israel, Joseph being the one involved, what was God going to do? Why did he let them get captured? Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, I believe. Trying to find a specific verse if I can see it. I haven't been back here in a while. Uh, if I don't find it, I'll quote it to you. Um, in Isaiah 45 5, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. And that's not saying that Jesus is not sitting beside him. There is none beside me. We use the word in terminology a lot of times. Besides that, there's nothing else. There's none beside me. Okay. I girdle thee, though thou hast not known me. And if you look back in Isaiah's prophecies about Israel, and the problem with Israel, and he's a major prophet in the Bible, uh, he's got 66 books, I believe it is, in Isaiah, uh, which matches the King James. Um, Isaiah is prophesying to Israel, you need to stop what you're doing 
and come back. That's repentance. You're in the wrong way. You're following the heathen that are around you. I told you not. You're marrying the heathen around you. I told you not to. You're taking their gods up that I told you not to. You need to come back. Because I am the Lord and there is none else. They had taken the Egyptian gods. They had taken all kinds of gods and were worshiping them. Newly gods that their fathers hadn't even known had raised them up. And they were worshiping that just like the heathen around them. And you got to understand, people look at things and the reason they want to worship or do things, peer pressure, is because somebody else has it or they have made money on it or a profiting in it, or something has happened that it looks good, and they want a piece of the cake, a piece of the pie. When God had Israel, he kept them. He hedged them about like a vineyard. He took care of them, but it wasn't what they wanted. It was what they needed. You understand, you don't get all your wants with God, you get your needs. He can do exceedingly above all that we ask or think. Yes, I know that. That is the ability. We'll get to that in a minute. But as far as what we always want, I'm pretty sure Garth Brooks had that one, right? Thank God for unanswered prayer. You have prayed for a lot of things that you didn't need. You just wanted it. Well, God gives you the right to pray for anything. He said, pray without ceasing. He said, uh, be careful of nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. Fine, but you don't know what you need. That's the ability of God to know. That's the foreknowledge of God to know. Okay, <clears throat> look with me in verse uh, 7. I formed the light and created what? Oh, wait a minute. Did he create darkness? Okay, remember that. I make peace and create what? It did not say he created evil. He said, I create evil. Can you explain to me, as in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, where iniquity came from that entered into Satan? Are you, are you going to believe in God today or not? Say yes or no. Okay, God created Satan. He was the anointed cherub that covered. He stood over the throne of God and sang. He is a minister of music. He, I'm telling you what, folks, all you got to do is look in the Bible. He is the minister of music. He is the creator of music. But somebody else created him. It's like people talking about these rich football players and the pros. You may be rich, buddy, but somebody's paying you. That means somebody's a whole lot richer than you are. You know, you get thinking highly of yourself, you better look back because somebody else got you. And it just goes on and on. It's like, you know, whatever. So here's Satan created to do what he's supposed to do for God. Stand over God and string praises. And this is be eons before Genesis chapter 1. Well, where did the iniquity come? And how did it come? And why did it come? Well, I find in Ephesians chapter 1, how did he know you? When did he know you? Before the foundation of the world. Well, that's when Satan was created. And did he say, I create evil? Would you say that Satan's associated with evil? Okay. How do you reckon he created him? For you to give God the praise by worship. Oh, you're trying to limit God. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is before and ever after. You can't understand that. I can't understand that. Our infinite little minds think about God and uh, knows every hair on your head and everything you ever did or will do, everything you could say. And you're worried about God? Quit worrying about God. Worry about you worrying about God. God is able. 
And so when Satan fell, <clears throat> what, he pulled a whammy on God and he didn't know? No, he knew. Iniquity entered in. He gave Satan a choice. You can be here with God all eternity, singing the praise, or you can fall. Are you with me? You can fall. And he fell. Then did he create evil? I, the Lord, do all these things. Hmm. Verse 9. This is a verse I want. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. I talk to people about the Bible and they don't want to listen. I tell people the good news. Hey, did you know that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day and it satisfied God totally and that you can never die? If you want it, God will give it to you free. It's called grace. He'll give it to you. You can accept it. It don't matter where you're at, if you're in your toilet or in your car or in a building. You can accept the fact, I'm forgiven forever. I'm forgiven by the authority and the ability of my God. And if I accept that, God said he seals me. That's the ability of God. We'll get into that in just a minute. Read on with me. He said in verse uh, 17, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens. Is this a, the authority of God? Did he create? Wow. God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it and created it, not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I, the Lord, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye uh, me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. That's very important. They're right. Okay, now let's look at some things. Look with me in Genesis 1. I hear people disputing on the time factors of creation. Was it 7,000 years? No, it's seven. It's six days. Said it was. <laughs> you mean tell me God created all this in six days? He God! If he can't, why worship him? If he ain't God, why worship him, period? Why even put the effort out? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning God created the heaven and earth. You know who I believe created the heaven and earth? I believe God did. Say, well, you're one of them guys that just believe in the Bible. Yes, I am. Bet your life on it. Okay? In the beginning God created the heaven and earth. That beginning having to do with God's authority. Why? Who's going to ask him how to do it? He said, or was you there to tell me how to do it? Was you there to tell me I was doing it wrong? I, I get to thinking about Adam. Adam, what's Adam? Look in verse 26. He said, and God said, let us, that would be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, let us make man in our image. Well, in our image then, guess what Adam looked like? God's image. That's his image in his mind of what he wanted man to look like. Did he look like a monkey? No. Did he look like Jesus? Yes. Because Jesus is the express image of God. And the time came. When the time came, he said, when the fullness of time come in Galatians chapter 4, God sent forth his son made of a woman. There's no earthly father involved. He made a woman. God formed a body in Mary for Jesus to come and indwell in. Why did he take a fleshly body? Because he's got to live like we do. He's got to be a 
man, Christ Jesus. He got to be a man that lives on the earth, tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. He's got to be God's sweet smelling savor in righteousness to take away what we are. You cannot correct yourself. Romans 5, 12, Wherefore is by one man, Adam, sin entered the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for all have sinned. It don't matter whether you're a bad sinner. It don't matter whether you're a good sinner. You're still going to die. And the reason you're going to die is you're going back to dust where you were formed. We're a bag of dirt. Some people are more dirt bags than others. But we're a bag of dirt. And the only thing that makes us function is the soul and the spirit. Ecclesiastes tells us about the soul of uh, the spirit. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. All right, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 19. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. I had an atheist tell me one time that we're like dogs and we live our life and then we go away. And I said, really? How come a dog does things by repetition and we have brains? So, oh, no, the dogs, you know, they're smart. I said, no, they do repetition. You teach a dog this, you teach a dog that, and he does it over and over again, same way, whatever. I said, if your dog's so smart, let him work on my Harley. He didn't speak to me again. I told him, I said, if there is no God, and this man had told me, he said, I believe in keeping the Ten Commandments. I said, you're out of your mind. If there is no God, I ain't keeping the Ten Commandments. I'm going to be hell on wheels. I'm going to do whatever I want. There's no judgment. There's no God to answer to. People don't believe what they say. They say what they want you to think they believe, but they don't. In verse 19, For what that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dies, so dieth the other. Guess what? If your dog dies... You're so much better than him, are you? What happened to you too? You'll die too. But there's a difference here. Yea, they have all one breath. What makes an animal live? They breathe. What makes you live? You breathe. That's why you don't live underwater. That's why you don't live in space. God set the bounds. You're our earth dweller. You breathe. Now that ain't all though. So that a man hath no preeminence above a beast. For all is vanity. All go into one place. Where do they go? The dust. You mean that dog's a dirt bag too? Well he came from the same earth that God took man from. That's how they're born. That's everybody. I wonder who made dogs. Could it be God? Okay. Now watch. Who knoweth the spirit of a man that goeth what? Are you with me? When Jesus hung on the cross, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. You know where it went? You know why he died? He gave his spirit up. That's how you know he died died for our sins oh yes Israel killed him the murder indictment from Peter is five different verses you killed you crucified you're the one that put him there but he died and the soldier was totally overwhelmed that he didn't have to break his legs because on a cross you break the legs of the people on the cross or they'll stay there for several days because they do this, they do that. And hung like they are, they suffocate a little while and they lift up and they do that. But if you break their legs, they're done. He went over to break the legs of Jesus and he's dead. And he's looking at him going, how is this possible? This only man only been on there for three hours. 
Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. Why? Because he's dying for our sins. His soul's got to leave the body. The body now is dead. It died on the cross. So on the cross, he's give up the spirit. So the body's dead. Now the soul's got to go somewhere. Well, you'd think God would take him to some really nice peaceful place and wait for three days because the prophecy was he would die and be uh, buried and rise again the third day. So he ought to be somewhere being nice and comfortable because he's the son of God. He had no sin. He did nothing wrong. There's no reason for him to go except for one thing. He went to hell for me. And when he went to hell for me, he left that body and went down. His soul went into hell for three days. And he suffered the torment and the problems of hell for three days. And then God forgave me. Let him come back, get in the tomb of his body, the body in the tomb, and he ascended to the Father. You know why he ascended to the Father? He took me up there. <clears throat> And he placed me before God and said, This man is holy and without blame before me in love. Why? Because God said so and he speaks in righteousness. Read it again. <clears throat> he said, Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Is the beast more important than the man? No. Are they equal in living? Yes. Why? They're both dust. People get thinking highly of themselves. Oh, these preachers think a lot of themselves, don't they? <clears throat> People who go to church think highly of themselves. You know what they are? They're dust. Allowed to live a God. When Paul got saved, he said, I thank God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. Wow. I thank God for May the 17th, 1984. For the first time in my life, I heard God's words. Jerry, you're forgiven. And it's not based on what you did. And I trusted God. And I can never die. Oh, I can go to sleep. I can fall dead in front of you right now asleep. But I'll never die. You know why? Somebody else died for me. And death has been abolished. We'll look at that in just a second. <clears throat> Turn with me to Romans 9. Romans 9. Your greatest fear is dying. Always has been. When you're young, you don't fear it. But when you get older, yeah, it's a little closer. <clears throat> young kids don't think about dying because they're invincible. They take all kinds of challenges and all kinds of things that could very well kill them. I jumped off the roof of my house, and did all kinds of crazy things. I, had, I don't know how many wrecks I've had. Turned over, hit a bridge upside down in a car. I don't know how many motorcycle wrecks I've had and all that. But when you're young, you jump back up and do it again. I'm not as quick at jumping now because of the times I jumped up. Now I'm paying for the jumping. I'm sore. Okay, Romans 9. But when you get older, you think about your, your vulnerability and that, is it today? Will I have a heart attack today? Will I have an aneurysm like my dear, beloved chiropractor? I mean, Bill didn't go get up that morning and go out to the hunting camp. Oh, I can't wait. I'm going to have an aneurysm today. I'm going to lay in bed for 24 days in sedation and never wake up, and they're going to pull a club, and I'm going to die. No, he didn't think about that. He got up and went to the hunting camp. He had plans. But he died. So will you. So will I. And you know what? It ain't planned. It's known. Now watch Romans 9. Look with me in verse 17 again, where we read. 
For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up that I make, might make my power, my power. That my power there is the authority. God had the authority over Pharaoh. You know why he had the authority? Because he let him be born in the first place. Folks, here's what the kick is that people don't understand. When Jesus Christ died, he bought the world. He paid the price that Adam over here cost us. Death. God bought the world. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It don't matter whether you like it or not, and it don't matter whether you ever accept it or not, you're still going to have to answer to God for one reason or another. If you answer to God right now, then you go to go before God because He has the authority to take care of you, and He also has the ability to keep you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Romans 8. He has the authority to do whatever he wants with you because you're his. He bought you and paid for you. And if you want him and you don't strive with your maker and you by simply by faith, I'm talking about just clean, honest faith, I accept you, God. You did it for me. I will never try again to save myself. You saved me already. I believe you. Then he'll seal you. And when he seals you, he has the ability through that seal to never lose you. Nothing can separate you. Now watch. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I walk up to people. I don't tell nobody I'm a preacher. Wouldn't do any good anyway. They hate preachers. Uh, people change their fun. If a preacher comes in the midst of it, I, I like to go tailgating with Dave, but I don't go around there bragging I'm a preacher or whatever. I don't say nothing about it. Because as soon as you say that, hey, people just start, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I had a man in the pawn shop one day just cussing, all raising sand, man. And I was standing there right beside him. He's just giving it to it, boy. And my other friend that owns the pawn shop over there, he said, that's my preacher. And he goes, oh. And I said, do wait, God heard you. <laughs> I've had him cuss me in jail. Just lay it in me. And when he get done, I said, is that your best shot? I said, you don't know how to cuss, man. I know how to cuss. You don't know how to cuss. I worked on a railroad nine years. I know how to cuss. And the guy looked at me and he goes, Wow, I never had a preacher tell me that because, oh, we used to make the Pentecostal so mad in there, they just foamed. And he just loved doing it. It was, his, it was his creativity of job that he just wanted to, oh, just get a preacher in there. Get him by the bar so he can just give it to him. And I got done, that man started listening. I said, you know the only difference between me and you? And he said, what? You got caught and I didn't. And he looked at me and he said, holy crap, I never heard nobody tell me that before. I said, but there is another good thing different. When I get done talking to you tonight, I'm going home and you ain't. <laughs> and he looked at me and goes, what can I say? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. But I'll ask people, I walk in and say, could you tell me the gospel of your salvation? And they say, what? Tell me about the gospel of your salvation. Now, folks, if God speaks in righteousness, he's going to tell you in that Bible your salvation. He's going to give you the gospel of your salvation in that Bible so that you can not only have it preached to you, you can read it. Now, the God of this world, who is evil, wants you to stay in death. That's where he wants you to stay. The God of this world wants you to stay under the death of of Adam. God wants to adopt you. He wants to take you out from under Adam. He wants to remove, remove you from any inheritance you have of Adam and give you all of his inheritance. What a God! 
He wants to give you everything he has for nothing. What a deal. I get these phone calls. You, since you used our facility, we're oh, we're telling you you're going to have a great. We're going to give you this great vacation thing. And I say, bye. <laughs> Nothing's free except salvation. Why? They're not calling me because they want to give it to me. They want to give it to me. <laughs> Man, you kidding me? Second Corinthians chapter four, verse three. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Correct? If you couldn't tell me the gospel, what are you? That man in jail that night, he said, he read that thing three times. He said, you know what my problem is? I'm lost. I said, I know. That's why I'm here. I didn't come here to church you. I didn't come here to get you to join anything. I didn't come here to get you to try to quit sinning. man in the rescue mission in, in Pensacola, the, the man that ran the mission... I got back there, I was up there preaching, had a bunch of bums in there, and I preached on them salvation without quitting drinking. The mission tells them they got to quit drinking or God will be after them. I'm up there and I preach that it ain't no matter whether you drink or don't drink, it don't matter whether you carouse, commit adultery or anything else, God saved you. You know what that man did? He called me into his office. He said, you can't be preaching that here. I said, why? He said, you can't let bums be free. I said, tell me about your salvation. And he couldn't. The Bible didn't say the truth shall set you free. It said it'll make you free. Make. Now watch. If our gospel be hidden, then we're lost. In whom the God is world. Now, who is the God is world? Is he evil? Then evil would want to hide the righteousness of God, right? God's righteousness come in the form of faith. But it ain't yours. It's the faith of Christ. God's righteousness to us is the faith of his Son. Romans 3, Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, several verses on it. Jesus Christ said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Do you think he got forsook on the cross? Badly. My God, my God, he just felt what you would if you died without the Lord. Jesus died without the Lord. One more time. Jesus died without the Lord. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You will never have to say that if you trust God. Because he will never forsake you nor leave you no matter what shape or what condition you're in. Why? Because he forsook his son once for all of us. 2 Corinthians 4, 3, In whom the God's world had blinded them, the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Most blinding is religion. I don't have much problem with people in bars sometimes. Except for one thing. You get down to the nitty gritty. Everybody claims some form of church whether they ever go or not. I got a man here that's never been in this church since I've been here. And I've been here almost 28 years. He calls it this his church. Fine. He probably think if the rapture is tomorrow, he'd be here in church tomorrow. I don't have to go anywhere to get the rapture. God Almighty's got me. He knows where I'm at. But I got a lot of enemies around me called adversaries. It's like battleship, you know. You miss. Uh-oh. Hit. A miss. And they're all getting all around. You're getting closer to you all the time. And pretty soon you listen to what they're saying and you zero in. You think that battleship. Adversaries all around that battleship. Well, 
if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them lost. Well, what's the good news? 1 Corinthians 15. I, I read this to people and I knew that. No, you didn't or you'd have said it. Now watch. This is the ability of God. Did God have the authority to create man? Did God have the authority to create heaven and earth? Did God have the authority to bring people in the world and use them? He had that authority, didn't he? Does he have the authority as he is the only God there is none beside me? Does he have that kind of authority? Does he have the authority to do whatever you want? Does he not have the power over the clay? Does not the potter have the power over the clay? And if he gets it all formed up and he don't like it, you know what he can do? He can just mash it. And that's what pottery do. You know, they'll form that stuff. Interesting to watch them. They form it up and get in there and they'll run it up there. And then something happens for some reason, his finger comes through it. Now it's got a hole in it. Now he's got two choices. He can either put a handle there where the hole comes through. Or he can just crush it. God don't want to crush you. It's his will for you to be saved. He don't want to destroy you. Neither did he want Israel to fall. God wrote more letters in this Bible to you than any other people in the Bible. There's 13 letters to us, Gentiles. And God's total and complete will in there is for you to know the truth, to receive the love of the truth, to study the word of truth, be confirmed, established, established, and the whole thing. 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. I listen on the radio and TV and this never comes up. And it's amazing. Which I preached unto you and which also you have received, wherein you stand, by which also you are what? Whatever Paul preached to the Corinthians saved them. It didn't save the Corinthians because they were good people. They were heathen. They were Gentiles. They were without God. Verse 2, by which also you're saved if you keep in memory what I preached to you unless you have believed in vain. I can tell people the gospel and 10 minutes later ask them the gospel. And if you think I'm lying to you, I was in Mount Ida not too long ago. Two ladies were sitting in there. I said, could you tell me the gospel of your salvation? And they couldn't. So I said, now I'm going to read it to you. And so I read verse 3 and 4. Now watch. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. We didn't kill the Lord. We didn't put him on the cross. How that Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to Scripture. If I believe that Jesus died and rose, I believe he's the Son of God. If I believe he's the Son of God, I also trust him, trust him totally, to be my forgiveness. I said, ladies, I read it to them. So I waited 10 minutes in the class. And I said, ladies, could you tell me the gospel of your salvation? <laughs> I mean, they went into orbit. They didn't know what to do. So I read it to them again. This time I waited about 15 minutes in the class. I said, ladies, do you know the gospel of your salvation? Dead in the water. The class is observing this. Unless you have believed in vain. Keep in memory. I got up this morning. You know what? I saved because Christ died for my sins. was buried and rose again the third day. I went to bed last night. And even though it didn't look good for Alabama at first. Christ still died for my sins. was buried and rose again the third day. And I don't put any stock in save them. Uh, saving is not my Savior. Alabama is not my Savior. Nobody's my Savior but Jesus Christ. Do I live in the world? Yes, I do. Do I sin? Yes, I do. Do I love living in the world? Yes, I do. But it would be far greater to be with the Lord. And this is why. When Christ died for our sins, what did he do? 2 Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 1. God in his righteousness abolished what you can't. If you pay the payment for being born, you're in trouble. Again, if you pay the payment for being born, you're in trouble. Second Timothy chapter 1, 
verse 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord appeared to Paul, and he said, Paul, this is what I've done for the Gentiles. Now watch. But made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished what? Oh, wow. My death has been abolished. Well, what was I afraid of? Hebrews chapter 2. And who would want to hide it that I have death abolished? When I went into the emergency room after the wreck, I started witnessing to people. And my blood pressure was 120 over 80. She took it three times. She said, it's impossible. She said, you ought to be way up there on blood pressure. I said, why? I'm not mad at God. He ain't mad at me. And if he takes me right now with a blood clot, I'm gone. When I hit the ground after I flew the 40 feet, sat down on my butt, I said a dirty word. <laughs> Let's see. Three. What the, and I'll let you put, put fill in the blank. I was sitting there, my hand, I looked down, my hand just bleeding, cut all the feet. I go, geez, that's not good. My ankle's broke. My arm is totally hanging out of socket. And I hear the girl calling, and she said, she's already on the phone. She said, oh, my God, I hit a motorcycle. Yes, lady, you've hit a motorcycle. It was us. And I started hollering for Kathy. I didn't know what Kathy was tucked in right behind me, but I, God saved me seeing her injuries. I never saw them till later. She got knocked out. I didn't. I saw it all. I mean, I remember flipping, hitting the windshield, and flying in through there. Ah! You know. But I never once in my life at that point thought it was God's fault. I was thinking, thank you, God. I know I ain't in heaven. This is Selma. And as I lay in the hospital all of every night, you know, they tell you to go to sleep and then they come and stick you again. Wake you, are you asleep? <laughs> I was. I laid there. And everybody would come in, I'd witness to. And I don't know if you notice, but I preach a little harder than I used to. I don't know if you notice that, but I do. Because, now watch, this is how close death is. I saw the car and that was it. And it don't matter how it comes. <clears throat> you knew how the, who had the power over it. Now watch. Hebrews 2 verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Do you realize that the devil killed him? So that God fixed the devil that he can never kill you. Now watch. So also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy. Hello, listen. Him that had the power of death that is who? The devil. The devil. Wow. Then uh, 1 Corinthians 15 again. The hardest thing I ever had was leaving the hospital with Kathy in there. I got out nine. She was there 14. I did not know of all the operations she was having because they wouldn't tell me. She didn't know the operations I was having. But when I came home, my daughter was very gracious to me and let me stay in her home, her and Mark. And that night... I have never sweated that bad in my life coming off the drugs. I do not take any medicine at all of any kind, but they had put me on Oxycontin. Lord of mercy. I quit it before I left the hospital. I told them, I said, I don't want no more of this stuff. The ride home, I sweated, and that night, I'm sure Robin had to wash sheets that, that next morning. It was so bad. I mean, I was in misery. 
takes three days to get off that stuff. As I come off of it, of course, you hallucinate, you do all kinds of crazy crap. But then I really begin to think and flashbacks just hit me time and time again, flashbacks. Do you know that God made all grace abound towards me? My wife made it through all the operation, no blood clots. She, she did fine. You know why? I need her. Dave, we need you. You're going to be operated on. We need anybody. Mr. Russell asked me one time, he said, why won't God let me die? And I said, because somebody needs you. And he said, who? And I said, I do, Mr. Russell. I love you. He said, I want to go on. I said, you might want to go on. But when God takes you is when you'll go. I preached his funeral and somebody got saved. So they even used him when he died. 1 Corinthians 15, 55. Oh, death. Now, does that sound like he's talking to somebody? Oh, death. Who do you reckon that is? What, what did the devil... He got, I, 30 pieces of silver. A man traded his life for 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver. And he could always been with the Lord. My God. Judas was chose by Jesus and could have lived eternally with God if he kept. And he sold him out for what? 30 pieces of silver. Listen to the preachers on TV. They have sold the maker out for ill-gotten gain. Filthy lucre. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have victory? Again, do you have victory? Are you free from ever dying? Can you go to sleep? If you go to sleep, then you sleep in Christ. But how does that happen? Ephesians 1, I'll shut up. Ephesians chapter 1. If I could jump up and down or do some miraculous cartwheels to get your attention. Or do something that would make you get saved, I would. I got news for you. God saved you before you were born. All I'm doing is telling you about it. Now you're hung. You have to answer God if you don't want it. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. You see, that was a legitimate terminology. What is the gospel of your salvation? The Ephesians knew. The gospel of your salvation, whom also after you believed, you were, oh, I don't hear this on radio and TV. Sealed Still sinning. Sealed and still sinning. God didn't see you because you quit sinning. He seals you because you trust Him. Amen. Amen. I appreciate you being here today.